I'm inviting our moderator, Darka Bajor, journalist and critic, to tell you a little bit more about the upcoming panel. So we are playing by the rules of the theater, so I'm inviting our participants on stage. Yuri Fuljuk, entrepreneur, founder of Prom Prilad Innovation from Ivano Frankivsk, and Oleg Saman. So today we will be discussing creative industries when we were going through our agenda. One of the cornerstone issues was why uh, we are discussing this right now. And my answer as the person who is covering and who is continuing to reflect on cultural policies of our country, I answered that we can and we will try to reflect on the intention of the Ministry of Culture and Information policy to put the creative industries at the center of the policy uh, in the sea of culture. They are developing a strategy for the development of creative industries. We have a specialized council for the creation of uh, these industries and this council includes the businessmen and authorities but uh, no people who are actually experts on creative industries so i think that we if the minister of culture uh, pays attention to the congress of culture still we can probably try and come up with a vision uh, we can come up with questions that are not always comfortable and we will try and understand what creative industries are in Ukraine at this stage and what is uh, the place of us, the artists and uh, particular actors uh, in this industry. So we will start with the definition. We are not going to define the term culture, but I'd like to start with a short introduction. So in this Fair creative industry, what is important for you, the creative or cultural component or the industry's part? So in your practice, in your reflections, what do you personally focus on? Olex. Hello everyone. Is the mic working? Hello everyone again. Uh, I was thinking about starting the discussion uh, with defining the terms that we are going to be discussing. So a brief introduction about cultural industries and how they are different from creative industries because in a way they are equal but the continuity of cultural industries is about millennia already because uh, we've had culture for uh, dozens of thousands of years and creative industries is a term that uh, was established in 1970s. It's a post-industrial term and if we go a little bit deeper into the history, since the ancient times we've had those uh, creative industries. So uh, this uh, broad image of an artist in ancient Rome somebody who was creating creative industries around them, who was employing a large number of assistants, builders, because uh, they had to create uh, kilometers of frescoes, uh, large sculptures, so uh, they were establishing the trends for the beauty of the body. So the trend was, for instance, let's not limit ourselves to some uh, purple gown and uh, people voting uh, in the forum, but this tradition uh, was later picked up on during Renaissance time. We can name uh, the workshops of artists 
uh, working during Renaissance. They worked on the border of education, philosophy, and artistry. People uh, who went to those workshops, they got education. So those workshops were at Stanford's and Berkeley's of the 15th and 16th century. So they were industries because they got large commissions to paint to cathedrals, palaces, they were traveling. They were also educating future generations of uh, artists the post-industrial term creative industries the way we interpret it was born on the border of the 19th and 20th century when new media appeared sound cinema and an artist became an individual not part of some uh, workshop So we've had artists working on specific ideas which in 20, 30 years became classic. So in 20 years, Impressionism, Cubism became classic forms of art. Museums of contemporary art were established and that's how it was all developing. After the revolution uh, of 1916, Business decided to negotiate with intellectuals, artists, and universities. So, big business, which almost lost everything after revolutions in France, the United States, and some other European countries, they've reached a consensus with the people who are generating ideas and senses and ideas who have the funds to support the development of these senses. So people started investing into galleries, museums, and some revolutionary work was happening, uh, factories and plants which were already shut down because production was uh, located in third world countries and those factories and plants were empty. And artists started uh, squatting those premises, those factories and plants. Uh, I mean, Soho in London, um, similar facilities in New York. So people like Andy Warhol, for instance, who created his factory of creative industries. Uh, he worked with the media, he created videos, and uh, they had this a high society life and businessmen, media people attended events organized by him and they worked in close cooperation with artists, with filmmakers and pop artists and uh, journalists uh, started publishing interviews with them, in newspapers and magazines. They wanted to be involved in events around his studio. So all the creative industries that we are having currently have come to the point where they need to realize is an artist an artist as a creator of sense and we have also creative industries uh, producing the creative ideas for people who consume them. So I have a question for Yuri, who is an entrepreneur representing business, a person who in Ukraine has implemented this project of a factory uh, at the cross section of education mm -hmm. and art. So how do you see the role of an artist, a person uh, who creates sense in the future? Do you see a vision for cooperation with these people? Because all creative industries should be filled with senses. We are undergoing a situation that is different from what we had in 1960s. First, something is being created and then 
it's filled with senses. But when the term appeared, first the senses were created, and then uh, the spaces, programs, and grants were developed for those senses. So let me start by answering the question of our moderator, what is more important in creative industries, creativity or industry? We need to understand that the formula contains both components at the same time, otherwise we will not have such a category. But the question of what is more important and what is the balance between them depends on uh, how we approach this issue and what our end goal is. This is just a tool in the context of our discussion. It's a tool uh, to influence uh, and shape high levels of culture, the same as is the instrument of pure art. But creative industries are also an instrument which influences uh, the societal organism to this or that degree. And the question is, uh, what is the purpose for using this tool? Some people use it as an economic tool. So everything is subordinate to economic laws primarily. And uh, people are using models which will give a maximum added value. Creative industries can on the other hand, be used as an instrument evening some shifts uh, of the post-war period. So one of our investors has often repeated the statement that after the annexation of uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, where he lost uh, a majority of his business, he realized the role of culture and education, and he became an investor of Prom Prelat, having realized how important culture is uh, for the vitality of societal organism and business in particular. So when we speak about creative industries, I have to ask this question. What is our end goal? What is the task we are trying to solve uh, by using this tool? If we use it in a business context, then we will imply a specific set of questions. If we discuss this, context, uh, this uh, term in uh, today's content, then th the questions might be different. Now coming back to the interaction to the with the pure sense, the artist and senses, and where those senses come from, I think it's all very individual. So it's like the question, oh, what was first the hen or the chicken? Should we create the preconditions and infrastructure first where the senses will be born? Or should we have another Profit being born in our society who will bring those senses to us, an individual who will lead or individuals who will lead this society and will create the demand and then the infrastructure supporting it will be born. So it's all very individual again. I like looking for proactive answers in cases like that and I like thinking about what I personally can do and who can help me and then I develop a step-by-step -step approach. I would ask you to be more specific about the situation in which we are. So uh, Alexa spoke about a consensus between business and art who agreed on something. So what was the situation? What was the context? How do you see this situation in which we need creative industries? If we look at the example of Ivan Frankivsk. So So in this uh, equation, we need to have uh, at least two working microphones. So you said that the answers depend on the end goal. So what kind of end goal is it for you? What tasks are you solving? So currently, we are working on finding solutions for the development of the whole societal body or organism. We are looking at culture 
uh, as uh, the top category from which everything else is built. So business uh, is located below everything in the society is below culture. So the question is, what tools should we use to influence the societal organism so that it grows faster in a more organic manner, taking into account the historical perspective in which we live, where we are and where we are going. In this case, we are looking at tools that can help us reach this uh, end goal. So if we look at our specific project from Prela, this is not the only project born on the Taplomisto platform. Uh, they have implemented uh, more than 450 projects over the eight years of their operation, establishing continuity. So from Prela, and its ecosystem is built on the cross-section of art, urbanism, economics, and education. But art uh, in this sphere is not the only one affecting. All the elements interact with each other, and we understand that the nature of different elements is different. Business has its own conditions of staying inside this ecosystem. Art and science have other conditions, more loyal e economic preconditions and specific support tools and uh, probably jumping ahead to our uh, next questions. We believe that uh, art for the sake of art is very important and our task is to use other elements such as classical business to create additional resources which can be used to support an art center which will have um, some uh, supporting fund which will help in the generation of census without uh, the obligation for capitalization. Only then it can develop freely and really create uh, sense drivers that will help the societal organism grow and find new solutions uh, faster and everybody uh, will be progressing faster uh, individually and together and we will achieve a better result in synergy as a society. We look at the society as an organism. Humans are an organism. So what is more important, the finger, the heart, or the leg? So in this sense, both art and creative industries, traditional business and education and science are equally important. Uh, this is a very interesting metaphor, of course. But I wonder what the ratio is. Is art the finger or the heart? So, uh, stemming from your metaphor, is art in this body the finger or the heart? Because finger and heart have a different role in our body. This is a dangerous question. What difference does it make? So, uh, this question already implies that heart may be more important than the finger. And we claim that each organ in our body is equally important. And if we try to make some sector of the society more important, then it prevents us from achieving the synergy. Let's be honest, I really like environments and spaces. I like this space, it's very comfortable and you want uh, to catch on to each word expressed by our speakers, but at the same time I feel a sense of being inside the bubble. And is this space in which we are now representing the general societal level? So I think that everything is uh, important, not that the heart is more important than the finger or vice versa. So before we proceed to the discussion of the place of the artist without putting it in hierarchy, I have a question for Alexa. So what Yuri just mentioned, do you as an artist see your place within this ecosystem of creative industries, an ideal art center or arts hub, an incubator? 
how do you as an artist feel within this ecosystem? Would you participate in these ideas and initiatives? I will continue with this metaphor of the heart and the finger. What we have to tell here is the agreements that I mentioned earlier, agreements be which were reached when the term creative industries was coined, agreements between business and art, uh, they happened within this dimension that uh, they are the heart and the finger of the societal organisms. So we've had this discussion since Renaissance when people raised the question of whether art could be considered science and during some of the serious meetings uh, of uh, Botticelli and uh, of uh, philosophers of Florence, people believed that uh, art could not be considered science, but science works in such a way that it doesn't bring you immediate capitalization. So this uh, discussion is 500 years old. So after all the wars, the old intellectual wars of the 20th century, during the postmodernism era, a consensus has been reached that the people who distribute finances, not the businesses, but the institutions distributing finances, they started promoting the statement that art was neither the heart nor the finger, but it was the brain generating ideas. So the Western Euro-Atlantic world currently understands that the world they are living in has been created by artists. So starting from the fork that we are all using or the car that we are driving as well as the clothes they are wearing or the painting they have on the walls of their apartments has been developed by artists. So we need to come to this understanding that art is an idea and then it can be applied to other things and seen as an industry. So that is my answer to your question. How do I see my place within this system? I don't see my place as yet because artists in our country and in the Western world, which we belong to, have become more of a scientist. So if you go to uh, some um, art residencies uh, abroad, you will see that an artist has become more of a sociologist or anthropologist. So they take a societal phenomenon and they study it. So uh, the end result may not be this traditional arts product, but it's rather a process of studying some societal issues. What the institutions are designed to do is that they think artists uh, have uh, a very specified uh, list of uh, things that they are to do. And uh, they cannot receive funding from the state or the business because they exceed the limit of the established agenda. So creative industries are like a sequel to the movie. So someone risked and uh, made a blockbuster and then somebody is uh, trying to make the sequel without the original film. So the, f the original film was created a long time ago and you can still benefit from it, but nobody is taking the risks of creating this original film. So. Artists nowadays are the sole creators of creative industries because you take the project, you put it up on social media, you have some curators who look at it, and this is how creative industries start. Uh, so you find curators who agree to work with you, then you find a producer who will produce it, then you find an investor to create an installation or uh, to film some video, then 
people are building something, critics are criticizing an art journalist writes an article about it, and this is how creative industry is shaped around the artist. This is something that I understand, but within this interpretation that Yuri has, I for now don't have the answer to the question how I am to participate in this ecosystem. So let's try and find out how Alexa can become part of your wonderful creative industry. What is this place of the artist? So once again, how do I differentiate for myself creative industries and just uh, artistic process creative industries that's you you have the world industries there industries type and business so it seems to me that important moment their important sign is to have value added uh, added value so economic added value mm -hmm. but it's not necessary when we talk about pure art then the top task here it's not uh, economical added value but those senses or art for art's sake if if you will and there can be economy but not necessarily and in this case it seems to me that it is important to have both categories and the artist have the possibility to choose whether he wants to concentrate on searching of senses, which in the doesn't mean that it does not understandable when it will work out. Or another question is how to make this process, and there should be economy. And there are e either there are some instruments on the market, or there are none, and you will need to make them up on your own or migrate creatively, freely in creative industry, and think that you. Uh, still can have economic sustenance, but it will probably distract you from thinking about some uh, s some higher uh, issues, and then you need to look for balance and to look for some higher sense or just sense, doesn't matter. And what I need to, uh, wh what I want to do is to find potential for one and for another. So it presupposes creation of internal a uh, charity fund which will take 30% of all complex on support of uh, education and incubation uh, of ethical business. And in this situation, uh, elements. In this situation, we look at elements of science and art as dotation programs, and we are okay with this. Uh, the only thing is that we uh, just presuppose it uh, as something that can be compensated by other economic activity. But creative industries is another category, and we have lots of space for it because we. Uh, we know that the more business migrate to creative industries, the higher intellectual, the, the, the more intellectual um, added value we will have. And the second uh, component is that we are going to have more senses. We are going to have a higher need for senses and art, and it will create new potential of cooperation. And it uh, equates uh, the whole social body much better. And we, everybody starts understanding the value of everybody else much better. And it will help to get better results for everybody. So it sounds very beautiful, but very utopic. But very beautiful. But I still have more questions. Because I see here, on the one hand, we try to create some kind of ecosystem and it needs to be balanced. And business and art and science and education, it all should be together. But still, there is some kind of uh, division. Because art is a pretty tricky thing. We have art for art's sake, which just needs to be left somewhere and let it be. But at the same time, artists who create um, pe who create arts for the uh, for the art's sake, what does he or she live for? Because if they do not have those beautiful 
stories uh, that there is great responsible business. I understand that there is uh, arts for art's sake and we shouldn't uh, demand some KPIs from it, but they are still there and let it be. But it's a unique situation. Nobody in, not, not so many people in Ukraine has this level of enlightenment. As an artist, as a person who knows other artists, how do other artists survive without being attached to that creative industry? If they do not have curators, he did something, he spent two years for some kind of research. So what, what is this model? And what else can we suggest it? And I try to find some limitation here. Maybe that's where the competence ends. Uh, and I want to ask as a person who counts other people money, how do artists survive? I know a lot of artists who still can live very uh, normally in Ukraine. Uh, we cannot say that they are just attached to it. The recently, we have received some grant programs, uh, and I have mentioned earlier, uh, it still uh, closes you a little bit, limits you, because for me, as an artist who uh, decided to deal with uh, problematic, problematic of art, dynamics of rhythm, and so on and so forth, I am beyond this context. I do not cover any social even issues right now. I'm just dealing with some uh, research. They are interesting for me, and I have only one set of instruments to capitalize it. There is a social network where I can put my work, and somebody is going to uh, exhibit it on an exhibition, and uh, somebody can buy it, or some gallery will deal with its selling. And uh, everything depends on your name. So I think that we can, I can still afford this because I was dealing with that and this uh, branch and field, lots of people know me, but whatever I do right now, whatever side I move, I am still going to be in the context of this uh, context. So I have possibilities to realize this. But what to do for all other artists? I can talk only about my experience. I cannot talk for others. So we do not have market formed. We do not have some art dealership. We do not have system of creative industries uh, that would implement something like that. But possibilities of people who consume art to be next to this art to be integrated in it all the time. It's actually educational uh, moment in creative industry because certain amount of people who can work in different channels are there in education or somewhere else. So there we have, for example, uh, art platforms for some performances and so on. But my individual experience shows that it all is still in the system of capitalism in the oligarch capitalism and in the Western classic understanding, it's still, let's say, creation of liberal capitalism and Euro socialism. We still haven't come to that in our territories. Just to generalize it a little bit. So, creative economists, it's actually. Uh, to make capitalism with human face, with responsible ethics, and so on and so forth. So how to avoid instrumentalization of art here? Uh, 
it seems to me that we as society develop more or less in an evolutionary process. Everything depends more or less in the context of general processes happening in the country right now. So step by step, we test everything that's going on. We have creative a discussion about creative industries in Europe. It was a little bit faster. We talked about that. They, we have such period right now. And probably in the process of experiments, we will uh, see different examples, good, bad examples, doesn't matter. But the thing is to choose something that works better to share some, to, to look at some possibilities that it can be strengthened with and just to do uh, something that we trust in, to believe in, to highlight good precedents, for example. In my previous uh, um, answer, maybe I described you some kind of a utopia, which is only, we only try to uh, build right now. It doesn't work as I have described. Lots of attempts uh, um, are there to were made so but still there was already this experiment which showed whether it can work or not but now not everything is going to be so idealistic there are lots of challenges that can be uh, that should be analyzed it should be related to some corrections should be implemented uh, there is a risk if we create uh, too comfortable conditions for art for art's sake how in uh, how those senses can be born kind of senses can appear and different stimulus in fi affect us so the coin has two sides there are different factors that implement all of this but generally it's a just a revolutionary process when people who have proactive position in life can influence this process uh, correlate it a little bit highlight their experiments for others uh, and that can be aspiration for somebody else to try uh, to do something on their own, something different. Allah has also mentioned that if you uh, want to have grants, apply for grants from state, but all grants in this or that case try to program that reality they finance. So from state order to some correct programming, so maybe we'll do this in this or that way. So it's still not a chaos and uh, swimming can some eternal sea. There are still some uh, frames. So how would you define those frames for yourself? Where, in other words, where does the freedom of uh, an artist end in such conditions? Artist, the freedom of an artist finish, ends with his or her own fr frame, first of all. And then there is some search of external uh, search for tools for, for cooperation with the external world. But to put some frameworks with external factors for artists, it's impossible because then the person will stop being an artist. The same is about philosophers. And then we have the question of this cooperation with real world. It can correlate certain moments, but it depends on creative idea, how can it find financing or review of consumer. Only this can help. I absolutely do not want to make up some uh, frames for artists, but they still are there. It to ends when uh, we think whether the artist will be possible to articulate uh, his or her product. But Alexa, what do you think for you of where freedom ends? Do you have some limits here? Because I try to find those uh, limitations because this uh, structure is too divine, too good. So I try to find some limits. Where are those limits? where they can be. I will try to formulate. So, for, as of now, artists, only that person can be an artist now who is ready to risk, seriously risk. What is risk in, a, in our modern world? If we have, for example, certain frames, we already 
have everything that we have um, had from European institutions in certain frames that give artists the opportunity to get benefits and uh, but they still do not give the, him the opportunity to develop so institutional things are built on the fact that they bet on what has already happened that can be capitalized person is ready to do what he, he has seen already and the same is about creative industries and institutions they are ready to perceive what they saw and an artist in my understanding should risk and should go in front of all of this so all those artists who were in the 50s and the 60s of the 20th century what they were doing they on the, ba on the, on the basis of, of, of this we have all our creative industry built and now we have some new uh, era new stage because we are inside the stage we cannot uh, verbalize it properly and lots of people are beyond this context where they can uh, reach some or get some benefits because they are ahead and they just do not see themselves there that's why artists uh, consciously destroys um, those boundaries and it's not necessarily that he or she can articulate it properly because as, as somebody else can be a speaker curator creative manager producer he should make a product first of all and the product materialization of ideas so who creates new innovative ideas uh, the one who creates innovative ideas is an artist so it seems to me that we somehow uh, say that, that what I what I have just heard I may be mistaken but I see here some total project some paradise project where we have some pretense for uh, all covering and why I have asked Alex about this because here we have this uh, destroying of this totality because it's like two parallel lines they do not intersect or they might intersect but we still have some independent process that my or may or may not be covered by this and it seems to me that it still should be covered and it shouldn't be forgotten that when you are so amazed by creative industries you need to understand that it's not vertical process it's my personal vision but i need to uh, bridge the gap here with what we have started with not with the definition but with the attempt uh, of certain policy of creative industries in our in before our industry you you have mentioned that state cannot be a driver of changes you as a representative of creative industry and person loyal to uh, such businesses who can be in parallel be engaged uh, be whatever where in this ecosystem maybe it's not yet an ecosystem where in this world of cooperation is the state and what do you expect from it personally we believe that the best results are achieved the best dynamics of development is happening when we have synergy in the, this triangle business administration state and uh, public society civil society but in post-Soviet period, where the trust was uh, destroyed, <laughs> personal and institutional, personal and institutional, well, it's very difficult to rebuild it once again uh, through societies, through communities, and when you go to this intersectoral dialogue, this is the next level, which is very important. For eight years in Frankivsk, we have been moving towards this, and from pilot and pilot. Um, Floor. We have uh, different businesses, NGOs, Office of Department of uh, mm, social, social Policy. That's actually the first precedent when this dialogue is going on. And it's not a fake. We, in, in three years, we have seen how the authorities 
uh, started even uh, talking and uh, looking in different way as other creative industries who are on the same floor, which are on the same floor. And there, there, there is a real dialogue and real cooperation. And uh, at the same time, I do believe that the state cannot be a driver of changes. The state is always not the least reactive component. They will be reloaded in the last moment. And it was like this for us as well. It seems to me that's pretty universal, at least for Ukraine. Uh, it's working on dialogue in civil, civil society business. And there is a huge potential of synergy underestimated by both sides. Civil society looks at business as for capitalists, as a capitalist who ruin everything around them. But it, it's fair at some point. But uh, still, business evolutionalizes, and uh, we need to think about some higher uh, elements. And we already have second uh, generation, and they are less traumatized than others and so on and business has lots of precautions lots of reservations about uh, about civil society and so on and so forth so if to look to go deeper into the stereo stereotype perception then there can be lots of potential and uh, then the state will come so when this this, these links are created. Uh, I have mentioned already the topics, but we have seven years of cooperation of civil society with business, and then we bought out the factory, and um, local administration understood that it can be connected to it and to have some political dividends out of it, and that's also good for the city. And uh, step by step, in transparent dialogue, it started looking like partners, uh, par not even partner dialogue but partnership and step by step i think they are going to be the last one to be reformed but still it doesn't mean that we have to forget and stop looking at that side uh, example of uh, work of ukrainian uh, cultural foundation during uh, yulia fadiev work showed that huge um, advances can be achieved where the state can really create stimulus for, cre for development of culture and creative industries in particular, if we talk about the CAF. But yes, on the one hand, I can say that uh, the reform will come there and we need to, to help those reforms. But on the other side, we need to let it go and and we cannot think that it will just happen. Uh, the only thing that uh, I encourage my colleagues to do is not to wait for some changes and then then it will be processes. In proactive uh, way, you need to create some preconditions for changes to happen, but not to wait that at first it will change there and then we will be able to live properly because maybe we will have to uh, wait for a very long time and we might not be able to wait for it to happen. Where do you see the state, Alexa? And where is this? It certainly has to do some work or what? It, we, or who? This pronoun can be changed, right? And where should it stop? I think that uh, artists should be as far from the state as possible, potentially strategically as far from the state as possible. But in the context of me, I have never taken part in any grants from the state. I have never applied there because there is no place for me as for an artist. It's not presupposed. And all our creative industries from the state, I do not talk about Ukrainian Cultural Foundation right now because it's a deep advance, great advance in our country. And lots of my colleagues, friends, they implemented their project there, some of the ideas, but expertise of people who, I'm not talking about Ukrainian Cultural Foundation now, generally, about those things. It leads to the fact that creative industry 
is about some uh, interesting tour on uh, cheese making factories uh, or sausage making factories and then uh, you can allocate five, 50 million of revenues for that for example with a creative industry tourism because it's also creative industry right so uh, tourism uh, we have uh, we have better tourism now uh, and an artist is not needed there he, he is in the same category that just is so they just crossed out only maybe some design can still be there but i say just generally so support for such small business uh, experts still If you take some countries of, uh, um, such as Estonia or Germany, they do have some programs so that they can get it through some fund, state fund, and you cannot do it through some accountant and so on and so forth who monitor all of this and who, make, who will make some reports. The artist will not do this. It's that's already a business project, but. Uh, Still, he or she can get a grant or a scholarship, and uh, you can say that in Estonia we have several thousand uh, artists, and we have uh, exhibitions. People come, and then 10 of 10 or 15 exhibitions are there. Country moves forward, and we know that there are progressive artists, and the same is in Germany because support through uh, during COVID-19 was. Um, 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 enormous uh, so the state is dealing with that on a different level for in our country it all ends with the fact that the bat is on creative tour on sausage making factories and uh, there will be capitalization of those tourists uh, buying of souvenirs and that is our creative industry so I think that they need to look at in the, the future and program pr program it a little bit so the country has to uh, to change priorities they need to understand that there are artists they need to give them possibilities and just move back but we have post-soviet countries so all our uh, authorities they were, were born in uh, the soviet union and creative industry there was completely different the artist was uh, part of ideological machine that uh, produced certain ideological senses and they were supposed to serve dialects and probably it's how they imagine the role of the artist if we live in capitalism then the artist needs to serve these senses i don't know what their ideas actually are but i can only imagine that they are having a scheme of how to understand the role of an artist within the state. Thank you. We have 15 minutes left. And I would like to give the floor to our audience for your comments, remarks, or perhaps conclusions. Raise your hands, please, because I cannot see all of you. Do we have any questions from the audience? Thank you. Thank you very much for this conversation. I was thinking about the following. Where can we have this meeting of the creative uh, entrepreneurs and artists? What could be a comfortable platform so that uh, we meet the entrepreneurs and um, modern artists? And uh, are there any existing platforms? And if they exist, do you visit them or do you create them? Let me start. I think that the wave of revitalization of post-industrial areas, it can create good platforms for such uh, meetings. I think that we might serve as such an example. We are creating one at our facilities, I know that in, Ukraine, in Lviv there are at least five similar projects which are revitalization projects 
in which mention creative industries or the artistic component or the two of them. So definitely we are having some cross sections there. And uh, there are also uh, multiple examples in Kyiv. I think that perhaps all cities are having discussions about creating similar spaces and I think that different platforms uh, or different uh, spaces where events take place, they also stimulate the dialogue. It's good when different forums, festivals and other events like that are also organized not just for industry representatives, but uh, it's good if they are cross-sectoral. I don't feel that I'm an expert uh, in art because I deal with management and I also try to do analysis of some societal processes, but maybe what I am telling you about from my perspective can show you what uh, the market, what the non-professional market thinks about what you are doing. But if you have uh, experts uh, on profound artistic processes come to different business events, then it would also contribute to understanding on how we can create products beneficial for all. So intersectoral events might be a way out. So congresses and forums and symposia like this one, uh, we have had uh, more of them uh, organized over the past two years. So how do we organize a discussion between artists and businessmen? I think that's the question that has been asked for many years. Now we are speaking within the context of creative industries, but I have also participated in other similar meetings like the one in Zaporizhia. So uh, this discussion is up in the air and I think that we have matured enough to find answers. Uh, we have discussed uh, this during the previous symposia which featured artists and entrepreneurs and there you can have a discussion and reach some consensus. So these are necessary platforms to meet people from another industry because these used to be some parallel realities in which we existed and we are right now starting this uh, idea with creative industry. It's really very young. It's much younger in Ukraine than in Europe. And we have very many interesting aspects that uh, we will face up with. And I think that the gaps will be filled with uh, different and interesting people. I have the experience experiences of the West, which uh, ended uh, with drinking uh, lattes and uh, smoothies and not really talking about art, but there are some platforms where you can discuss such things, so there is diversity. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa, for raising uh, the issue of the role of an artist in sausage production. So what does it tell us about that the role of sausage in society is clear, while the role of artist is not? So it means that the dominant culture in our society is the culture of poverty. And, uh, how, and when these creative senses and creative industries leave their bubble and reach the society, then we have some scandals like uh, the Monument to Mozart in Lviv or the theater on Podol in Kyiv. So this just shows that we are people of totalitarian thinking. So I have a question to, the, to both speakers because we have discussed added value and practically Marxism. So have you thought about mechanisms of how we could convey these senses to masses on a practical level. 
Thank you, thank you. It's a very good question. I'm expecting that the artist takes some uh, non-standard steps, that they are provocative, that they try to shake this monolith society which has these very standard values that you've just mentioned. I believe this is the task of art. And let's have a look at some practical examples because it's easier to explain. We are trying to create conditions when it's easier for artists uh, to have a voice at Prom Prelot, uh, the area of the facility is 38,000 square meters and uh, some of this area is given to business to this business has 30% of direct social functions and they are creating the potential to support uh, art, education, science, etc. But even uh, when working with the design of these ecosystems, the central entrance is made in the form of an arch and that is uh, 1,200 uh, square meters uh, allocated for a gallery, which are currently being constructed. So Prom Prelot is becoming a cultural and dialogue center of the city in terms of its geolocations as well. So you will enter uh, this center through art and we plan to host at least 10,000 people daily, so the population of ivano frankivsk will be uh, the monthly audience of our center, and they will have to enter and leave our facilities through art. But this is just the infrastructural foundation, and then uh, the voice of the artist becomes very important, how these uh, 1,200 square meters uh, will be failed, what will be the content, how bright it will be, not in terms of color, but in terms of being able to catch attention and speak to people. So that's already the question to artists. Everybody is used to that art is like that. Uh, the person asking the question is not using a mic, I cannot hear it. So the 1,200 square meters don't ha doesn't have the KPIs of producing some economic value. We are creating the infrastructure which artists can use to generate census. Uh, we've had consultations and our partners, uh, Jam Factory, do we have friends from Jack Factory here? They are also helping us with the development of the concept. So Bajana was asking whether we wanted a commercial gallery or uh, would you like to have a research gallery but without the potential for generating money. Of course, we are focused on research. We are focused on generating census and it's not our end goal to have a return on the investment. We are not making this a one-time solution. The, the center will be working uh, in the long-term perspective for decades, so this is us creating potential. But again, we cannot complete the entire project. So from our perspective, we are just creating preconditions. So I will answer the previous question about how we should convey the ideas to masses. So in this specific very creative industries is a channel of communication. We lack these channels of communication. So how can this situation be improved? So coming back to those scandals regarding the Pudol uh, Theater and the Mozart Monument, It appears that everybody has their triggers which cause a discussion and this is all a chain reaction 
and uh, people start signing petitions regarding uh, deplatforming some very uh, mundane things, but it shows that our society is not ready for it. This is a classical modernistic monument made following classic modernist trend. This is not extreme avant-garde and it fitted into the setting. So uh, there are no people who can explain these things to masses. And there are experts who are called uh, study, who are called experts in culture, cultural studies experts, and they need a channel of communication. So from the looks of it, uh, our creative industries can be a channel of communication. So if uh, a cultural expert is here just to explain to people why this is a good monument, it means that they are not performing their function. So probably we need to have another platform that could be doing this explanatory work. Let me add a little bit. I don't see any problem in the society not being ready. It will always be the same in other countries as well. Some provocation and some stimuli for critical thinking for the development is the objective of art and that's actually what we want for art to achieve and to do so somebody mentioned that uh, murals were painted over in Frankivsk we were actually involved uh, in this mural being created and we received so many uh, comments on Facebook, people saying that uh, my kid has better artistic skills than this one. So no other illegal construction site in the city had the same response. So even if a week after we painted over that mural, then we received the reaction that we were hoping for being a kind of a trigger in the society, I wouldn't see this as a problem. Very often for me, this is an indicator that art works, that this is uh, quality art which creates senses. Uh, hello everyone. So today we've heard a lot about objectives, visions, ideas and capacities, but as a matter of fact, the raw capacities in the public and private sector, the raw capacities to support artists, but what uh, I and my friends artists are concerned about is serious ageism, because normally all the opportunities available in Ukraine are for people under 35, so grants and programs are available to this age group. And my colleagues ask a question, what do you do when you are 35 plus or f over 40? So uh, if you are no longer a, a designer and you have uh, burnt out and you want to be an artist for the sake of art or just to generate senses, so the next question is also about gender balance, but at least we see that uh, women are having more opportunities, but I'm more concerned about ageism. So most of the opportunities for people under 35, so does it mean that uh, the senses generated in creative industries by older people are not interesting, or what does it mean? So this is what I'm concerned about. This is what I hear about uh, in the communities of artists, and I'd like to hear from our speakers uh, how do they see this situation? Is it a problem in the sphere they are working in? And it seems to me that uh, each age is important and everybody should have equal opportunities. There shouldn't be demand only for youngsters and we shouldn't be supporting only the young. What do we do with other artists uh, from other age groups? Yes, I agree with you that the problem exists and uh, it was also a problem I faced and there is an explanation for that because all grants and all these programs have been copied from Western examples and when they came you know, onto our scene, it happened some 10 years ago about uh, the 
age range programs for people under 35. So in the West, this is all well structured with communication channels for an artist uh, to become a professional. So by 35 in the West, you are supposed to become a fulfilled professional. When these programs came to Ukraine, uh, we've received this uh, threshold and uh, it's being shifted. Uh, the fact that we copied uh, these programs, if it appeared 20 years ago, then at 25, for instance, you can start your career and then you can apply and by 35 you are no longer eligible. In the West, at 35, you are fulfilled artist, owning your own art studio, gallery, uh, being awarded and having your works exhibited uh, at museums. And this factor was not taken into account in the Ukrainian context. Uh, I'm not very much in the loop on this question. Uh, we don't face this uh, age issue, inclusivity is very important for us. For instance, two artists working on the pilot floor, Vitaly Grech is under 35, Yarema Stets is definitely over 15. They work in the same space and we've never even had um, any questions regarding their age. I'm not even sure how old each of them is. So. We are not having this issue, but uh, I assume if you're asking about this, then it may be a problem. And uh, also Alexa mentioned that uh, it applied to him. Yes, it was just uh, ageism and yes, that's a problem. That's how it's called. Thank you. We will be finishing our discussion towards the end. I would like to add a couple of my own reflections regarding our today's discussion. I think that the continuation of this discussion and the discussion that we are going to have with the state in view of the strategy that uh, should soon be presented, I think we need uh, to ask ourselves how we are discussing these things. When we are speaking about the meeting between uh, business and artists, the first question that comes to my mind, who is to invite who? Who is more active? Do we reflect on these things? If we are the ones who invite, then we are in the position of power. These positions of power is something that we should take, our, uh, take into account. If we are the ones giving the money, then again we are in the position of power and very few people will refrain from setting some limits, uh, either formal, either time limits, either limits of transparency, honesty, etc., etc. So these are eternal issues, eternal questions, and of course we constantly discuss them, and we are not the ones starting this conversation, we are not the ones to finish it. But what I'd like to say is that when we say that artists, create their work, but also at the same time we speak about conveying the messages of the artists. So it, does it mean that artists have to be likable, that they have to fit into a specific agenda? Do they have to be aggressive? Do they have to follow some patterns? So do they need to meet some requirements? And the more questions like that we ask about the artists and the more we reflect on ourselves, then we are able to enter more horizontal, more equal conversation where nobody is trying to impose some rules on others, where we are all on the same level and we can reflect on important things. In continuation of the conversation about creative industries at 5 p.m., we are going to have a discussion about cinema, whether we have this industry in Ukraine or not. I think that's quite an interesting question, so don't leave. Uh, let's continue our conversation. I was very happy to see all of you. Thank you.
So we are starting cinema, about cinema, in the cinema. We are going to look into the future. Uh, my name is Alexia Nana. We have wonderful company today. If you don't mind, uh, we are going to deal with titles later. Uh, without any kind of introduction, I would like him to start immediately from the, from the question. Maybe it's very primitive, but I would like to know, my dear friends. During the last five, seven, two, three years, whatever you prefer, what you were amazed with or what you were shocked with in the Ukrainian cinema, what do you like the most? <laughs> Julia Sinkevich, producer, co-founder of Ukrainian uh, Cinema um, uh, Academy, member of European uh, Cinema Academy, the person who was one of the organizers of Odessa Film Festival. Hello, everybody. Really, it's a pretty provocative question. Uh, but I think that I would um, answer based on the latest movies. That's a movie by Katya Horonostai, Stop Earth, uh, which took part in Berlin um, Cinema Festival in hybrid um, format, and it gained a uh, crystal bear in the generation program. Why uh, this? movie because it's very different different from Ukrainian TV show that did write Ukrainian TV Korean cinema it's drama about uh, growing up and I really like the method with which Katya is working she is working with a documental uh, method she even uh, teaches documentalism and it's very it's a hybrid format of a tv show of a, of a movie but you can really trace there the emotions of uh, heroes and it can be very difficult to depict it uh, and it's absolutely impossible to hide because there are mm, it is a very natural uh, movie but each of us has um, each of us was in this age and uh, each of us was in this uh, role of that um, uh, of that teenager because it was a story of a class I'm very much waiting for uh, criticism uh, week and uh, <laughs> Uh, Olga Reiter, program director, co-founder of Lviv uh, TV festival, uh, cultural management, and so on and so forth. We can talk and talk about her position. So, in Blitz, uh, what what did you like? And I have never, I haven't seen this TV, this movie yet. I hope that I will have the possibility to look at a big screen. It's a very provocative question because there are. Uh, a lot more than one of such movies already but I am not going to be original and I will agree with the Ukrainian audience and I will just name Antonio Lukic movie uh, Moje Dom Katihi, my, my Thoughts Are Silent because it's uh, one of the best comedies which I maybe one of the best uh, and sorry of, and maybe actually the best I uh, and it's a, you can really watch it even uh, with parents because in Galicia we have it like uh, with uh, like in Italy it's very difficult to severe ties with your parents and uh, I think that Antonio really managed to 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 show this conflict parents uh, children to show this and it was a cultural platform of uh, a cultural platform of HBO and I think it's one of the directions in Ukrainian um, movie sphere that has to be filled in and that's how we can uh, that's how we can get wide audience and it was very uh, it was very wise let's remember about this you can watch it with parents maybe it was one of uh, the uh, one of the circumstances that uh, provoked the so uh, such high uh, box ratings of this uh, movie. Uh, Katarina Slipchenko, editor of internet portal Zahidnet. Katarina, your reference from Ukrainian TV during the last years. I'm very happy that, uh, good evening by the way, uh, that it uh, this uh, question uh, became uh, difficult uh, but I'm probably going to agree with big uh, cinema festivals and I will 
uh, name the movie that um, my son went with his parents. It's uh, of Atlantic, but by Valentin Husanovich, Atlantis, and I think that war uh, topic is. Um, difficult for everybody it's uh, it, it hurts uh, all of us has personal um, losses here and has what to say but it was uh, set in a very on a very high level is a very quality language and I think it is such thing that you can use to let the world hear you and and but first of all it is a movie of very high artistic level where every uh, ev uh, where every episode can be observed and analyzed there are not so many uh, movies Ahtam Saitablayev actor uh, producer um, we have and the director I'm probably going to talk about Natalka Vurush but uh, Bad Roads uh, it's a very subjective view on people on their relations in very uh, difficult political conditions. It's amazing job with actors. Uh, I I do not really differentiate author um, TV show, author movies and uh, for movies for regular audience. In this movie, I was amazed by uh, the play, the actors play the topic and the frankness with which Natalka. Uh, Natalka treated it, and of course, work of Volodymyr Ivanov, a cameraman. We are going to, to talk about those movies later because we cannot uh, but mention them. But I, and I would like to express gratitude to organizer once again for this perfect uh, topic. It, it's a great pleasure to talk about movies. Uh, movie is uh, uh, the movie industry is growing. We really have what to be proud of. And uh, uh, frankly, uh, and is happily, we have already lots of uh, the premieres every year, lots of new movies every year, and not like it was before when it was one movie in several years. And the reason, of course, um, that. Uh, that really industry over the, they have money in this industry and the whole world is uh, around us now we will try to find out where do we have industry where do we have creativity and what it should tell us but this forum today's forum uh, is uh, dedicated to future glimpse into the future uh, visions cinema as visions from the cin from movies that we get and how is it going to leave as industry tomorrow we are going to deal with this but uh, in, uh, important definition for start from the beginning what uh, is uh, ukrainian uh, movies uh, so it was developed um, uh, it has been developing many years so what is ukrainian cinema is it tv shows or some short movies or i for myself formulated this like something let's call let's name ukrainian cinema everything that gets a state uh, financing um, can we refer like this okay we cannot then let's uh, work on those definitions so please get back to those uh, talks but for future uh, one of the most important thing I would like to uh, hear what defines um, future whether cinema can be a mirror of a society and what do we see in this mirror and what plots do we have there and in those plots let's try to find out let's try the speechings your little question to you I know that you read a lot you see a lot uh, what are those movies about it's good that I do not need to answer about uh, Ukrainian uh, cinema. Uh, there are different, several topics that were very up to date after 2013, very relevant after 2013, 2014. Uh, war, uh, Crimean annexation, uh, worries of those tragic events by uh, person, and person is viewed under microscope in all sectors of his or her. Uh, per, um, psychological situation this uh, PPTSD and it is pretty sad face of Ukrainian movies which uh, for, the, for one who is used to uh, watching uh, movies for entertainment very often 
uh, beyond our bubbles, let's try to find out why do we have only sad uh, movies in our um, country. So first of all, it's authors' movies. It's something that triggers them today, that worries them, uh, script writers, uh, directors and everybody who is uh, related to this. I was also thinking about the hero of the character of Ukrainian uh, movie and I even analyzed uh, for the last several years m movies that uh, they, they were um, shown on this or that TV show. So it's good that for the last several years we can f Ukrainian movies are present almost on every big film festival. But why I have mentioned Katya Gornostai movie that it is different because mostly main character is an average aged man in crisis, uh, middle aged man in crisis, and uh, it's connected, of course, with uh, obstacles, life, life circumstances from his uh, background to where he ended up. And that's actually the face right now of uh, author Ukrainian uh, movies. Bad Rose actually is different a little bit because there are lots of characters, there are lots of stories. But that's how it is. It is a mirror of what is happening in society right now. And what impulse does it give us for future? It's mirror of something that we have right now or mirror for future? Well, Atlantis, for example, that's for future. Action is happening in future and the man, man also has a crisis there. But it's a reflection of what is happening here and now to what happened yesterday, maybe as reasons of the events that happened in 2013, 2014. And that's maybe some kind of strength to, uh, to find what we are going to talk about in the future. It's already recognizable face of uh, Ukrainian um, movie in the Western, for example. It's kind, kind of a trap in which, uh, for example, in uh, Balkan uh, movies, people also expect already that it will be connected. Even if it's a romantic story, it still will be in that particular obstacles. And that's how it is. And future, so Ukraine, from Ukraine, uh, people also expect certain things already. Yes, yes, uh, for recent years, uh, we have this um, need that we want to have a movie to open, uh, to show the situation that is happening, uh, to show what is happening right in your country. We do not know all the details, we do not know what people go through, but at the same time, this person and these, um, these emotions are close to everybody, and this, that's what is happening only with us. But uh, that's what we have uh, need in festivals. But if we look at the projects at pitching, that's what uh, worries uh, directors. So if to judge from something that was not chosen, picture is going to be wider. So you have some uh, wider information. Maybe there are projects not about war, but about uh, some uh, greenhouse, for example, or winter garden or maybe what else is there in the agenda but for war of course historic figures uh, historic periods uh, if to talk about mass movies of course comedies local comedies romantic comedies relations of people um, all possible topics that are relevant for people but if to talk about the future the, why I mentioned Katya Hornostai movie, this is, the, this is what we have, something, we have something different there. It seems like it is on surface, but this is, um, you can watch it with parents, you can show it to your uh, child, and it will be just for further thinking, further contemplation. Ola, uh, for you, uh, about your festival um, movies that you choose, uh, it seems to me that it is, inter uh, it is interesting how you made your choice. Here we have a wing of movies and events that happened not on Yula and me. We chose uh, not war movies. We chose, and here we have Bad Road, uh, the Atlantis. That's a separate wing. It's about war. So it seems it means that we 
pr uh, pr uh, actually directors now try to define this character. I would not say that um, categorically that it's only a middle-aged man. Yes, but I still would like to say that we have two wings. It's uh, really great. We have even more wings, but uh, that's the way it is right now here. And uh, it seems to me that a um, hero of our uh, cinema, it's real. It's, it may be, yes, a middle-aged man, uh, because the director chooses uh, a man as a, as a character, because majority of full-fledged movies are filmed by men, and lots of women directors now try to develop stories. They applied for pitching, and they even um, managed to uh, have success there, and they're going to have female characters. Um, and uh, we need to have this gender equality, gender equality. Uh, for example, Lower Horizon, Marina Stepatska is now developing a TV show and there are separate um, female characters. If to talk about future and whether movies can form the future, we, can, we cannot answer all questions at the same time, but if you want to do this right now, yes, okay. So your last question. My last question was the material, thematic, uh, uh, what do, do you choose for your festival? Then again, if you talk about Two Wings, then we have realistic uh, movies, like Mirror of Reality, Reflection of Reality, and also a certain set of uh, directors who uh, make movies which are different, uh, different from the reality, that's pop culture, you maybe have seen um, those films, for example, made by Zizzo. Uh, that's the how we. Why uh, do you, when, when you feel kind of ashamed when you talk about this? You, well, you no, know, because for pop culture it means that everything is good. Uh, you know, it's important moment. Of course, we are going to mention about cyborgs uh, because at one moment we had. Uh, uh, cyborgs and the same here we have Zizzo Contrabass and they had b the same um, box rates uh, and uh, and that's what we had in uh, um, and I will probably let other speakers to voice their ideas but I think that we already have this variability, we have uh, organizations, we have, for example, a devoted uh, movie, Vidana, about Stus, about Petlura, and we do not, and maybe if, if, if we did not have Agnieszka Goland movie about Holodomor, it would be difficult to name a good film about difficult topic and uh, surviving um, uh, some traumas in, uh, in Ukraine. Now our directors, they just uh, try to repeat, re re review their uh, teenager years and they try to, uh, to, uh, to know themselves, to find who they are to understand themselves and then to move to the world. Psychotherapy, I would like to fixate those moments. They are important, it seems to me, because we will not be able to omit going to some meta context later. We have plots and then we have general topics uh, which they lead to a body, freedom, uh, searching of himself, of yourself, frustration, personal or social. Maybe you will talk about this later as well, but so far we have this thematical field of Ukrainian uh, movie. Katarina. Thank you. It's very good that we are having two wings, three wings, however many wings we need. But I will introduce a pessimistic note. I believe that we don't have enough movies made in Ukraine and we don't have enough directors and we have insufficient funding. As far as limitations are concerned, bed roads were not funded uh, by the state uh, cinema. So this is the wrong criteria. So we shouldn't be limiting ourselves to pitchings only. 
That is why we are quite limited in topics. We are exploring history, war, and we are currently having the new topic, the 90s, our attempt to reinterpret our 90s. And what is telling when the trailer uh, for Reinhorn uh, by Oleksin Sov was released and uh, the people who saw it uh, <coughs> saw the trailer without seeing the film compared it to Brat and Brigade the Russian uh, films and uh, TV shows so there is always this comparison so the films being released now the one by Sintsov, Irina Tsilik and uh, some others about the 90s. So, uh, Katarina, how do you think, has the time come to reinterpret the 90s? If we compare these movies with Brat and Brigada, the Russian films and TV shows, because they were released 10 or 15 years ago, because for instance, the exhibition at Mestetsky Arsenal is currently summarizing this period. What about cinema? Has the time come for us to interpret, reinterpret this topic? I don't think that when we speak about cinema, there are, uh, that we have topics which are timely or not. I think that we need to speak about historical topics and not just to go to the movies together with our parents but also with our kids and it may sound wrong but uh, cinema needs to perform ideological function and do some propaganda because if we have a wonderful topic but a bad film is created for many reasons, but uh, primarily because of the person who is behind this film. So, somebody puts a tick that uh, we have uh, explored this topic already, but um, indeed the topic has not been explored. And uh, the directors who are now working with the 90s, the 90s were their childhood, so they are looking at this period differently. So this movie will be different from Brigada, for sure it will. Uh, that's what I wanted to tell, because uh, the, these movies don't romanticize violence even for a tiny bit, and, bit, and the same goes for Ira Tzilek's film. So if a director is interested in a specific topic, then it means that they need to explore it. It's something they're interested in, something they are concerned about. And it will be interesting to the audience. So we think that we need to make a movie about Vasil Stus, and we are convinced that the state will fund it. And what's the worst uh, is that uh, children still attend these movies. Uh, six and seven graders will not be reading Vasil Stus's poems for sure, so uh, they go to the movies with their parents. So the topic is not about state commission, the topic is about the choice of the director. How, do, how does the director choose the topic? I will not be reinventing the wheel by saying that cinema for me is about people, about their dreams, about their fate, about their pains, about their striving to achieve their goal or inability to do so. Whatever the tools, the toolkit offered by world cinema is, and also whatever the achievements of uh, computer graphics are. I think that still cinemas is, is about the stories of a man, a woman, or a collective image. When I personally start working on a specific film over the past 10 years, what was most interesting for me was to study a human in extreme dramatic unusual circumstances because uh, I believe that these are the conditions in which a person's traits or features 
are expressed the best, be it war hostilities or family conflict, a uh, problematic relationship between a man and a woman. I think that the future, not only of Ukrainian cinema, I will not be arguing here about the quality uh, of uh, world trends uh, being expressed in Ukrainian films, but I think that we are taking the path that developed movie industries have already taken, so we are facing the same issues, the same problems. So what are those problems? Let's make as many films as possible dedicated to a specific topic and if there is a demand for that, as Katarina was right to mention, there cannot be a guarantee that state support will be given, just there shouldn't be a guarantee when you pick a specific person to make a, a film about that you will be funded by the state. You need to have a clear vision and uh, at least a rough idea about the end result. Of course, nobody uh, can give you definite guarantees, so there are many examples when everything was supposed to work out, but it failed. So what about the issues, the diseases of world cinema uh, that you mentioned that uh, are also uh, now experienced by Ukraine? So we are currently trying to find a key that will open all doors. Each door has its own lock. So we cannot use the same key for all the locks. So right now we are trying to identify which genre will be the most popular among the audience uh, and be box office success. There is no genre like that. My Thoughts are Silent is a telling example. We also mentioned Zizio and the movies in which he stars Back in the day, I do respect uh, the comedians and comedic genre, but maybe it was just the right timing, hype, word of mouth. Maybe because uh, maybe because uh, when we were creating our movie, that uh, the military men supported us. A variety of genres is a good thing, but it also entails huge responsibility. The choice for one correct answer as to what Ukrainian cinema should be is a dead end. I don't think that's what we are trying to discuss, not uh, how it should look like, but where it should drive uh, our society. It may be easier for the Pantona Institute, which decides uh, on the hues and colors which are trendy next season, and it's uh, more complicated for Chinese textile producers. In cinema, the situation is different. Um, there are different uh, coincidences. I have just my own observations that uh, several Ukrainian movies create one plot line. Parepotny when the trees fall, partly wild field, volcano. So uh, they are in a way a road movie when uh, the character uh, finds themselves in the middle of some Kafkaian situation, they are either a middle-aged person or just a character experiencing the same problem. So we have four or five directors who have similar experiences which uh, they expressed in a similar way in, in their movies. Does it mean that this story is about us? So if we look at Ukrainian cinema from this point of view, what is modern Ukrainian cinema about? All these movies, if you talk to their directors, they are personal stories of those who created them, a story they experienced either as kids or observed. And uh, in most cases, these are debut films. I'm not a director, but uh, I talk to them quite a lot. 
and when uh, you have to choose what to make your film about so you first go to things which are most understandable to you in all the psychological aspects of your characters that is why those films were released uh, practically at the same time because we had the financial uh, capacities for that and we had enough funding for the movies to be made and that's all they are all personal reflections of what happened to the directors in their childhood how did this reflection coincide for several people at a time? Was there another underlying reason, psychological, political, creative, social? We live in the same country and many things may be similar for us. Not all the directors are of the same age. For instance, Arkady Nepotiluk is a little bit older. The movie Back Home, my thoughts are silent. Uh, I sound like a person who is a huge fan of this movie. I'm mentioning it's it again. But this is a genre that uh, directors often use. Road movie is quite popular. It's not just a road movie. It's a road movie in which the character is lost. Does it say anything to us about ourselves? I haven't united uh, these films in one category. For me, they appear to be very different. They just belong to the same period. Yes, they were released by uh, the same generation of directors, but again, those people were growing up uh, more or less at the same period, so it's hard to answer your question. I do believe these are good films because uh, each of the directors was interested in their story for specific reason. Bondarchuk practically films everything in her son and her son region. Uh, he knows this nature very well and he's interested in it. I think it's a huge mistake when young directors and students are often guilty of uh, trying to explore topics they know nothing about and the topic they don't really care about. So they produce a very mediocre product. So let's try and have a look at this problem from a different perspective. We have discussed the emerging topics that is being that are being born and selected, but the question is who and how is supposed to form some ideology or thematic line for the public commission and should there be uh, an expressed uh, position of the state in the ideal world yes the state should form its own narrative and context in which way using which tools for instance uh, getting together people uh, interested in the topic experts of the industry people who are moral authorities who are professionals in their sphere get these people together so that they can talk debate it may not be easy but I don't know any other tools which we can use yes you can order people to do something you can make them do something but it will not result in anything good you will make one or two films but the experience of world cinema and theater as well I have theatrical experience that's why I can say people who are working in creative industries they respond more quickly to the challenges around us more quickly than uh, the state apparatus uh, that is obvious because the state has its uh, bureaucratic system its understanding or lack of understanding of what the budget is made up of the kpi so how do you compare the Cannes uh, Festival and uh, the small box office inside your country? So, uh, which is better, being presented at the Cannes Festival or being a box office success in your country? I think that we need to complete this complicated way. Yes, we need to get together, discuss and suggest in an ideal world cinema needs to be uh, 
there it cinema will not exist in a country like ours without the support of the state but if we have some limits but what if we have separate financing but real financing or pitching connected with independence day or any other historic data I do not see anything uh, wrong here. You just need to remember that behind every formulation uh, there is a human factor. That's why they say if you make a stupid person uh, pray to God, he's going to uh, hit his um, forehead. And we are really, I, I'm a father of four children and I really want my uh, kids not to learn history from those uh, uh, books where it's written the Crimea Tatars are enemies of Ukrainians. It's today for the eighth uh, year of war. Who should I ask why do we still have it? Why it is still there? Why it is still written there? Yes, we need to gather and we need to talk about it. We need to to do like Charles de Gaulle did with today in France they still learn cinematography starting from uh, uh, high school and to articulate to this topic in cinematography and start some kind of social discussion is it enough to have voice of author of director or uh, it should be a polyphony of uh, methods and tools I do not believe that one movie can change uh, one's life uh, we all understand with you that around 75% of population gets information through TV. And if this, uh, this event is not on TV, it means that it does not exist. The, f the fact that we are in Facebook, TikTok, Instagram shows only a small part of our audience who later can or may, may or may not come to the cinema. And I always uh, say and I insist that content forms audience, not vice versa. The f what child reads from the very childhood forms future politician who cares for, let's say, safety issues, defense issues, culture issues, or teaching. That's never ending story that uh, TV shows what is going to be shown and they see what is shown and then we have popular YouTube when uh, people swallow uh, lamp bulbs and uh, that's it has lots of views. But the state can uh, voice their uh, opinion. They say we want to state talk uh, film on particular topic. Is it right or not? Right in what sense? Here, on different discussions, and different presentations, we have heard uh, the, this uh, topic of uh, solidarity, solidarity, uh, of solidarity. <laughs> solidarity of effort. So, from which? Uh, how do we see which topic uh, is in demand? If it's not in demand, then why uh, the audience needs to pay their attention to it? And how to make the audience pay attention to it? How to draw their attention to this? Because yes, we have mentioned that there are uh, movies about uh, historic figures and historic events, and then they say that we do not know how to make movies. Yeah. Information war, as I'm just going to repeat, in Ukraine, uh, lost informational war. And it's understandable that cinema is one of important directions here. And the place of movie at the beginning of the 20th century, when the cinematography has uh, just been, has uh, just uh, appeared, and it became tool of propaganda. And if the state shows we are going to... Um, film this and we are not going to film that uh, so among uh, the, uh, the the ocean and the uh, and the devil's place what what are the tool set of tools it's a research i have mentioned it already research uh, identification of those growth zones or possible topics vectors of development of uh, cinema industry because it all cannot happen just like it is. You need to know your strengths and weaknesses. I don't want to provoke, but still, 
we understand that it is chosen on pitchings by state, uh, by civil commission, so representatives of audience, it's expert commission, uh, professional community, people who know about politics from different institutions, and we think that they can be trusted. In Ukrainian Cultural Fund, uh, the situation came to the conflict situation. It is difficult, it's a systematic problem. We know that everything is simple in uh, movies and that uh, the uh, the authorities of um, Ukrainian state film agency is not perceived very well by people. But does the politics need um, to have a cinema uh, to be a kind of step to achieve today's result? Maybe it's going to be some kind of... Uh, of uh, seduction, yes, to uh, have uh, to uh, to have something like this with movies. You know, there are such perfumes, agent provocator. That's you. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. But uh, you need to move from the democratic society values uh, that Ukrainian. I hope that it wants to be like this. And there, uh, there should be some politic of protectionism, There's some topics, vulnerable topics, which needs to be supported. Uh, is it going to be critical towards the government or not? then it's, pre it's pretty open world right now. It's not the Soviet Union that what is shown is right. No, it's not like this. Uh, you can watch TV in every uh, uh, tape and in every corner of the world. Or they will not let me lie. Uh, every, people understand everything about the movie from the 15th, 20th m minute. And I think that we, it all can happen, and we, it has been manipulated, and people continue to use it for manipulation. But support of protectionism of those vulnerable branches is, is needed. And then, uh, yeah, there are lots of provocative thoughts that have already been voiced, and one, um, one, con one I think, uh, Akhtam, you mentioned that it's a controversy for me. You mentioned that you we have to listen to those people who feel the like kind of note of uh, present times, but at the same time have state order. And I uh, see it here, and I try to find this uh, border uh, where do we order something, have some composition for wedding, like make a movie about how cool it is to live in Ukraine, how great it is, how many possibilities we have here. And I have seen such movies mostly. It's uh, our Ministry of Tourism orders lots of such short movies and it uh, spends millions. But uh, to be absolutely frank, uh, that those international grant uh, programs, they work based on those templates. Please create this or that on this specific topic. And it does not mean that it's going to be half person a political vector, but still. Yes, I would say that certain direction can be there, but um, limitation of topic, I would not do this on the place of our state. Because then we are going to have very second level material, movies that are made specifically uh, for uh, a certain topic and patriotic movie that's uh, the any kind of film which is any kind of movie which is filmed, even if it's critical about our reality, but it's good, it's already patriotic. Even if it's say Ukraine is a complete trash, it's still going to be cool and uh, patriotic and uh, bec because it's going to uh, still find uh, selectors, audience, or world audience, there is a huge threat uh, to have what we have in totalitarian countries, like in Russia or in Belarus, where the whole action is based on censorship.
we have this very uh, thin line between creative uh, voicing and uh, creation. Our society should be democratic and uh, authors' uh, statements should be in the first place. Katrina, maybe I am trying to uh, make it darker than it is, but everything is developing and the project that we have in the Vrhovna Rada uh, by they uh, um, in, they increased by 10 percent uh, financing for movies. It's uh, 671 million. No, no, every, you are you are right. Uh, you, Laola, has already mentioned absolutely uh, practically everything. I would just uh, like to make a point that, on my point of view, it's much more patriotic to make a movie about a person, to show it in cons, than to film. Uh, some kind of uh, movie and uh, make soldiers go there. But I do not own this information, I see only the top of it, because I do not deal with the content, but I uh, know for sure about financing that probably the state shouldn't finance somebody's commercial projects. Uh, do you mean somebody specific by it? Yes, yes, not one mm, project, but there are many of them right now. And the second point for movies to be developed, we cannot get back uh, every five years and go to the different direction. You cannot do one thing and then uh, go to a different direction and then drop it again. So there should be some sequence and the sequence should be guaranteed. It's extremely important moment. Budget financing and increasing of uh, financing, that's not enough guarantee? Not, no, it's not enough guarantee, because what can be financed? For example, TV shows production. Yes, and it's one of the diseases that several of our neighbors uh, already um, had. Yeah, but Netflix now is the main platform of, uh, mo of sharing uh, movies, maybe serial TV shows production is a future for, it's just my uh, comment, and then Yulia and then Yes, I just wanted to clarify about budget uh, that it has increased. First of all, it's not pure budget that uh, we, we, they, we are going to finance film on that money. And second of all, Netflix, Netflix is great, but it is, has been waiting for Ukraine for 10 months already cash debate, so it's money uh, that uh, for, for a TV show that was filmed in Ukraine, they still cannot get this money. So this, is, so, so more state budget does not mean more highest, biggest state budget does not mean more movies next year. Yes, I would like to add also some moments. So, could you please tell how many um, work of arts, world arts, do we know that were made by order? the state or, or sponsors, Michelangelo Bonarotti, Rafael Sabatini, they all, uh, was, was, did they create uh, with their own money or somebody ordered? Was it uh, the Pope or uh, some uh, or, or some sponsors who ordered this, some rich families, wealthy families? Of course, uh, well, well, the, the other thing that Michelangelo Bonarotti was the one who uh, was actually performing, that was something that was commissioned. I, by the way, was voting for financing of Vene uh, uh, Venice Festival, but it cannot exist without support of the state. Can we still say that we do not have enough of cinema halls? Can we talk about commercial component of Ukrainian movies? Can we still talk about the fact that it, we do not have protectionism of the, uh, from the country about the development in Ukrainian uh, of Ukrainian movies at least um, to, that will have the uh, that will give the possibility for <coughs> creators to uh, show their creations on Oscar or on some other uh, festivals. So who there is always a human factor. Who has these or that functions of creating state functions, creators of narratives? You say uh, representatives of international market. That's perfect. That's extremely important. But we are not going to change 
country or context on their personal narrative if we do not do anything and it may sound strange for creators of uh, authors cinema uh, it we cannot change anything in our country if we do not create content of, of um, high quality for internal market which will raise questions that are uh, interesting for us not for the world the world is not going to change us if we ourselves do not start changing and we need to start changing starting from starting from our children from educational program from what they watch the, from the fact that in the schools we need i i repeat uh, words of one very famous producer that even now in france it is obligatory in schools to learn cinematography and then in 10 years this uh, future uh, viewer can differentiate uh, Buonarroti and not uh, Michelangelo Buonarroti uh, French movies from not French movies and thanks to the support of the state it's not sustainable development of our internal viewer our internal viewer which is absolutely different content and we see it in everything so neither in TV shows nor in entertainment genre I uh, see nothing bad there but we will never be able to change our internal viewer we will never form new narratives or we will never uh, know that we we are people who can differentiate bad from good if we do not work for our viewer Achtam, you just uh, led to the next question please do not put down the microphone i would like you to continue for who for who we are doing this and who is going to be the future audience ukrainian audience uh, festival um, juries um, white audience of tv shows what what is your view about this what's your opinion we need to work uh, for everybody if to talk about target audience target advertisement i film only for experienced educated wise audience okay but what to do with the with the others who have who haven't had possibilities to watch it on the internet or through some other sources for a movie for example which gained a uh, palm branch I mean, we are not going to create content for them. We are not. We are not going to create content for them that can make them watch a different uh, look, a different uh, type of cinematography. So, when you choose, uh, what should be, what money should be given for, then can it uh, what can uh, be what what can be predicted to have success in ukrainian uh, box office but support of uh dash of dash kino competitions of uh, uh ukrainian Sand film agency competition if it's a film for mass audience then it's uh, for mass audience and it's like and but if it's author's movie then we have a strategy of promoting and another question is what is realistic or not realistic but it's for certain category and if to talk about um, state policy what else can we pay attention to only financing and also creation of ecosystem we a lot have heard in discussion today that we need to have uh, we need to have cinemas, we need to, if it's 400 cinemas, then uh, we will not have enough uh, box office success. If we have 1,000, do we have enough viewers to have so many cinemas? Does uh, state need to achieve it somehow? It seems to me that film industry, as you have mentioned, it is an ecosystem. Uh, it's another question whether it's eco or toxic, but it's a system and uh, it's impossible for something to work in ecosystem and for something to not everything should work in balance so development of film projects it's uh, producing and it's promotion on any kinds of 
uh, TV or channels, it is in one system. And to pay attention more to this or that is not very correct. Uh, so how many uh, cinemas there should be for movie to uh, get back money? Uh, were there a case? Of course, there were cases when they returned money, but how many cinemas we need to earn money, not return? And we can only say theoretically. If I'm not mistaken, after COVID, it's pretty difficult to say something. I don't know whether we have had some investigation, some research, but general information before COVID was around, you will correct me if I'm wrong, 550, around 600 cinema halls, not cinemas, but cinema halls, so cinema screens. Uh, so with that amount of uh, population that we have, it should be, for based on the world experience, three times more. Um, so for 42, so 46 Ukrainian uh, million, uh, we need to have 1,500 screens. Yes, it does not mean that the movie will earn something or get money back. We know movies which the same Jerry Bruheimer, uh, gold boy of Hollywood, has uh, had such situations when his movies failed, even though everything was perfect. Actors, topic, computer graphics, uh, um, director, and so on and so forth. But it is not a 100% guarantee that the movie will be profitable for its creators, but at least it's going to be a great tool. So even if... Uh, if a viewer comes to the audience once, that's already going to be good support for uh, support of Ukrainian movie. Ecosystem of movies is actually a pretty wide topic. For I would probably pay attention to none of the components. It seems like it are a very big, uh, so big, big, um, big spot. Uh, it's like a cinema school. We don't have enough of them, like maybe one. And it is not even a cinema school, it's a faculty of uh, Karpan Kokari Institute in Kyiv. And there are maybe some independent schools, Institute of Culture, yes, Institute of Culture, private universities, Ukrainian cinema school, there are many different schools. But mostly these are schools that are mm, based in uh, in the capital and Norwegian experience shows that we shouldn't have a lot of uh, producers, of uh, directors to have great movies, but we need to have more schools in different regions. And this is something that can be changed on the level of state. For example, some short movies, uh, they are um, not, not, not they're poorly financed or not financed at all. And those good student works that we achieve, that's that they are made on their own enthusiasm, some uh, genius, some talents. Yes, but I have this, those long old examples uh, uh, from the mid of the 2000s. It was diploma project by Igor Strambitsky in theatrical university, and he actually was the he won a gold branch. Uh, yes, it's Berlin cinema school. So, all in all, we have weak spot in it, and that's how we have uh, our base as directors and if to talk about short movies there is the system as financing debut movies and we, they are very poorly financed maybe five six movies per year up till ten but i think that it's better to uh, to to source to allocate those money for students works and give a little bit less for debut works and have some system of uh, incentives for students. One more topic, uh, we had this topic in our previous uh, speech, but it is kind of uh, related to what we have uh, right now. Stylistic maybe is a common strategic stylistic. So we should also speak about specific topics 
local topics, local stories, maybe local cinematography. Can we have them in Ukraine? If we look into the nearest future, maybe not the nearest future, we already have some examples. We mentioned Roman Bondarchuk, who films many of his works in the south of Ukraine. If we speak about short films or films in general, then the works of movie commissions will contribute to that because we already have associations of movie commissions and there will be additional sources of funding in addition to public funding. So we have made the first steps already. Thank you very much. We have discussed the number of cinemas and the audience. We also have our audience here with us, so please uh, we are ready to listen to your questions. If we have some questions, then we can hear them now. I have a question about cinema schools. Do we have them in Ukraine? And if we do, what are they? Because we all understand that all these uh, green houses where all the uh, participants of this industry are being brought up, these uh, green houses need to have some schools. From my modest experience, the funding uh, that the state allocates, which is several dozen million of hryvnias, maybe uh, our state shouldn't uh, create new cinema schools or reorganize uh, old schools. What we need is a specific number of experts in the sphere of cinema different types of cinema, we, ha we need to have them and they need to start making quality films. They need to have the expertise. So what am I driving at? So maybe the country should spend the provisional 78 or how many uh, millions uh, on young people uh, and uh, scholarships for them. It will again be state support, so we can say that we need uh, this amount of directors, this amount of cameramen, this amount of screenwriters, so we have uh, scholarships for these people at existing cinema schools, schools existing abroad, and these people are obliged to return back to Ukraine and create cinema here. So. If I want to become a director, I apply for a state scholarship, I travel to Poland to Lodz, I study there, then I come back and work in Ukraine as a director. Should we, should we do it like that or not? I want to introduce some provocation into this very peaceful discussion. Yulia, what do you think? Yes, this can also be one of the solutions. Yes, we should uh, fund scholarships and we should uh, send uh, our students or existing professionals for training or retraining courses. But the question was instead not to finance uh, theater, TV and uh, cinema, but uh, instead uh, fund the scholarships. I think that's something in addition. The system term of education which may uh, on the contrary attract those coming to Ukraine. Maybe I'm thinking idealistically but that's where we should try uh, and strive for. So is so you suggested an option that uh, something we could do instead. I said this is something that we can do in addition to the existing scheme. I know that our existing school of uh, cinema uh, is not operating uh, in a proper way. It's good that I got my degree from two other schools, but what I'm saying that doing reorganization is necessary to create a new school because 
My opinion is that good academic degree will never replace alternative uh, cinema education, and we have used those alternative courses and short-term programs already instead of academic education. I'd like to add that any type of education is about connections, and when people graduate from the same cinema schools, we have directors, cameramen, and screenwriters with a shared background, uh, common stories to tell. So this again uh, shapes not just educated people, but shapes some kind of environment. So Parajanov, uh, the provisional Parajanov will have his provisional Ilenko upon graduation. So your provocative question, I think that instead will not work. Akhtam, what do you think? It's a nice initiative uh, if a student who have uh, proven their uh, ability to tell interesting stories on any topic, uh, stories that touch the audience, and if they have this recognition of uh, film festivals, or this uh, either film student or young director, and if this young director have uh, the, this ability to go to Lloyd's or to New York or to Canada, to Italy or Spain, I think that would be wonderful, but still, how about us? How about our own context? How? about telling local stories, what about think locally, create locally and think globally. How will Bundarchuk film something about Kherson if he doesn't know Kherson? Yes, he was born there, but the tools, the instruments, so what We have so many practicing directors and so many people, I mean many, and by many I mean a dozen, so Natalka Vorozhbit and some other people who are creating stories, they have this global thinking. So can people like her, like Natalka, Jak Antonio Lukic, um, like Mr. Liev and many, many others, and playwrights, don't they deserve for, to have their own school? Don't they deserve the alternative? Yulia said that we have used uh, alternative schools for the past 10 years. So uh, Irena said that it was a provocative question to introduce a kind of provocation. So will that provisional Bondarchuk come back to Ukraine from Lotsk upon completing the course? And Irena said that that should be a must, that should be a condition. If the country is investing in a talented person, then the country can demand for that person to come back and work for three years at least for the benefit of that country. We, we may still have some questions from the audience, but in the meantime, a comment from uh, Julia. Yes, people will come back. Marina Droda and uh, her colleagues, after coming back to Ukraine from abroad, they filmed about Ukraine and they received funding here in this country. Do we have any more questions? Okay, then uh, we are moving forward. Uh, we have very little time left, but uh, there are several thematic blocks that uh, we will be discussing. We have touched upon the topic who will be filming in the future. We've touched upon this. I heard something uh, from Olesa Ostrovska Luta, and when she is asked about who is representing our future, who will represent our future, that is a female director, Natalka Vorozhbet and Irina Tsilik. We have this trend of women who have come into profession and who are working actively. This is a trend. We already have resources. A law has been developed. We have the system of 
spit tanks launched. We have these uh, committees which are, which are doing selections and they are doing indirect redistribution of funds and we have some results and we need to maintain uh, this system and cinema is an industry a creative industry and with us if you don't win the pitching then you don't make films of course we have some exceptions but if it's not the public funds then it's the funds of the ukrainian cultural foundation or the funding of the ministry of culture for patriotic movies that's an exception so in ukraine do we have any examples of films not with public funds we have producers uh, we have uh, showings in cinemas we have uh, 500 cinemas so do we have any examples of commercial films not funded by the state yes uh, we do have these examples if i'm not mistaken in 2012 i together with a f with my team uh, filmed uh, the movie Haitarma and um, we didn't have a large budget. I think the first uh, movie featuring Zizio was filmed with uh, private funds. A crazy Wedding, uh, also commercial movies which were a box office success. Uh, the movie Swingers, uh, I haven't seen this one, but maybe yes. Uh, the one about Ilovaisk, also commercial funds. So you tend to call these exceptions, even if we have a list of five, six already. So if we speak about Zizio Contrabasso, the crazy wedding, as of today, I may not have the complete information. It's unlikely that a film made in Ukraine w with a budget of over 10 million hryvnias, even for uh, the pre-COVID period, uh, it's highly unlikely for a movie like that to be such a box office success that would cover all the expenses. Uh, the movie uh, featuring Zizio had a budget of 4.5 million. That was what the media reported. Uh, so, so, private funds is not always a solution. You also need to work with your potential audience. You also need to promote your film. Also, uh, the quality of the film matters. Uh, the time when you are releasing it, but that's more about the distribution of the film. But again, I'm highlighting as of today, unfortunately, we haven't reached that level of cinema distribution and relationship between the producers and distributors when a quality film is 100% guarantee of box office success. As my colleagues mentioned, festivals are also made of real people. If you made a great movie it doesn't mean that those people uh, selecting movies for the festival will see this as a great film so you have to go through all these steps for those people to see you so Yula, we can say that if we have such movies it means that for example that it means that we have some non-state financing of cinematography or is it exceptions? It's absolute exceptions. It's, it's also Haitarma. It was absolutely different country. It was absolutely different system of everything. Movies that are going to view later as examples, that's, um, uh, that sounded as examples that um, very short period of production, like 10 days, up till 10 days, minimum of locations, uh, very small stories, small budget which uh, could have been coincided with the volume of Ukrainian film market. Is it a quality movie? Of course, of course there are some uh, authors' movies made with uh, smaller money, but they did not or would not have the such commercial success. But of course, it cannot be compared with the industry. Uh, if based on our previous blog on cinema education we do not have enough uh, artists uh, costume makers in historic uh, movies for example we have two of them 
or maybe we, if we have more movies like that, then we cannot talk about industry uh, where we have one, two, three specialists. Um, I would not call it industry, but I would not call, name it that. It has very short uh, term of existence and functioning. And uh, basically speaking, we have such uh, we have examples of contemporary art in gallery uh, art. Yes, there were foundations which get some um, grant programs. Ahmedov program, Ahmedov fund program. Now it has certain uh, programs, but in uh, other type of art, visual art. Do we have? in cinema some private initiatives or the fact that we have constant uh, increase of money allocated for movies and budget and it relaxed a little bit those who would like to create alternative donor budgets for movies to be created in ukraine and producers who are looking for this budget because it can uh, look on the, on, from the other side that it is more comfortable to fight, to, to, to compete for better money uh, in state funding, to have better uh, pitching than uh, find money additionally to state budget. We all need to understand, especially those people who are not involved in cinema process and cinema production, that cinema is extremely expensive. So when we hear about those million budgets that are uh, given out by state film agency, and it's not just like that that they give them. Let's say just financing of movies, it's 10, 20, 30, but million of hryvnias, yes? So this is budget of production of Ukrainian film. That's how we need. You cannot uh, film for less. Uh, 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 maximum is 20 million of hryvnias, and if we compare it with minimum is 10. 25 maximum, okay, bets are rising. As of now, it's 25 million maximum amount of money allocated for state film agency. Uh, given this, but 20% uh, of this should be found by the re, uh, film producer. Okay, why I uh, decided to mention this because it's very difficult to compete with state financing with those for those private funds, or to uh, mention cinema commissions. So it's uh, thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of hryvnias uh, that every state regional administration can give such money for production, allocate such money for production, but it's maybe for what for one or two film days. And for such financing of the, such a studio system you were talking about, you need to have certain historic uh, uh, preconditions that we had that they had in the USA. They f they had the system formed, and the movies are financed in this way. And for us, and we are part of Europe, it is different. And you will not find even in European cinematography examples of such there are certain examples when films are financed from private sources so even in a bright future we want to talk about we cannot do with state financing no we always need to put those money in our budget forming our uh, let's say a cultural uh, basket, consumer basket. Achtam. Country aggressor that started war against Ukraine eight years ago made one important for in, in the first place for existence of this country thing. If I'm not mistaken. For three years, they have had such um, bonus mode for any kind of ownership forms in the context that if this business then supports national uh, producer, national TV, then 
he will have some kind of tax bonuses, tax um, fluctuations on his main business. So if some entrepreneur understands that if he allocates 10 million of revenue in Ukrainian movies, legally will pay taxes much less than he pays without in investing into Ukrainian movie, education, medicine. It seems to me that they, everybody is going, all businessmen are going to invest in Ukrainian cinema because it's going to be profitable from the side of business because businessman is businessman. Businessman gets uh, income from his own business and then maybe the country will be supported there will uh, will support only author uh, well this state will need to support only author's movies it's not like you put one revenue and you get three revenues no it's going to be image component for country and maybe it will come it will become um, also important when this movie wins at some kind of festival and i talk here that protection proj projection of um the country of the state that we do not give uh, fish but we give uh, fish or uh, fish rod and uh, for um, Yulia Sienkiewicz commented here that it brings us to law about sponsorship when you uh, help and it gives you certain um, bonuses in uh, taxing two final questions if we talk about future of the whole society we do not want from industry we, know we cannot we, we still can want something from art but we cannot rely that it will do something specifically for us maybe for example form some kind of unity but it can do it cinema is uh, this common communication field field from which we as representative of society, certain group will get common sense as something that we can divide us and share as emotional experience. But we still, it's going to be the same if we uh, all watch, for example, my thoughts are silent. But is it enough uh, in those Ukrainian conditions that we have um, had in that budget that we have right now for cinema to really be? Uh, this instrument and field is a social tool, not only art tool, but also social tool, which gives birth to senses, or it still can be some news on public broadcasters, some uh, humor TV shows, or that's already movies as well. If you don't mind, I'm going to be the first to answer. It's going to be a terrible situation if only cinema is a tool of creation, narrative, senses, uh, values, uh, narratives. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be the same zone. Watch. Uh, you need to watch the cinema and you'll be the movie and you will be happy. It's going to be terrible. A uh, person has to read. person has to look at the art. But movie right now, is it enough powerful? Do we have enough access for uh, audience? We talked a lot about bubbles. So, so, so bubbles. So, is it cinema? Is it a bubble or a river? If we talk about world experience, we can only prove that it's a very powerful inst uh, tool set for identification. I uh, yesterday uh, we signed memorandum with the team of. Uh, um, Navy um, forces of Ukraine, and you know what they yes, the forces of Ukraine and uh, soldiers who are 16, 17 uh, told that majority of them came to that uh, academy watching, you know what, cadets, cadets, Russian TV show. So, do we need to create such conditions or such content? Maybe it's even if it's too patriotic for somebody, we have what we have. Without dealing with our inter internal viewer, we lose not only only our viewers, but also sense of our existence. So movie cannot be the only set of instruments, set of tools for creation of people. Sorry. 
cinema is not that widely be, be, um, uh, widely seen. If cinema is an art, we do not differentiate all the time cinema as an art and cinema as entertainment. I do not encourage to pre prohibit something or put up some frames, but those things should be differentiated. And that movie that is an art that has festival representation and so on does not have enough viewers. And that movie that is an entertainment is unfortunately of this level of, uh, what what can a movie teach racism or what so i absolutely uh, agree with Achtem that uh, we need to reflect uh, but the, the producers they do not uh, live in vacuum but it's reference to the Soviet movies, but still in certain environment of my colleagues, I can speak in uh, quotations from the boy, uh, pigeons, love and pigeons of Minshov, and they are going to say something. But I, uh, but it should be some common experience, shared experience, but we do not have that uh, common experience for everybody in cinema. I think that quotation book, let's say, was uh, my thoughts are silent. They had perfect strategy when, that, when for Telegram they have such stickers with uh, aphorisms from the movies. I will ask, uh, well, we have one more minute left. If you don't mind, uh, we, we will let us finish this question. Ukrainian movies, Ukrainian films, can you show? Can you name me one that uh, really is about future? Mm, so you mentioned that the directors are now working with their adolescent uh, teenager traumas. I sometimes have such feeling uh, that behind we have some kind of gap, some f room that has to be filled in, and then you can. Uh, and until it is not filled in completely, Ukrainian culture, not all Ukrainian culture, but still we are trying to fill in uh, something to have behind us. But such phenomenon as uh, uh, Titanus, for example, Titan, uh, it's a very controversial uh, movie, but maybe, it's, but it's still trying to cover some not understandable future for us, some ethic question. Uh, something that has not yet been covered in newspapers, not has been worked with, worked on in politics or in sociology, but the artist already tries to do something with it. So, can we say that Ukrainian art is targeting future, or is still trying to fill in um, back room? I cannot. Uh, it seems to me that it's a very difficult question, but only one movie can do this. It's a movie that was financed by uh, actually a director and state has absolutely nothing to do with it. And it's uh, about future not only of Ukraine but the whole world. It's, um, um, it's desert, uh, desert country. Uh, maybe somebody has seen it. It's about, it's a documentary documentary about the country that uh, suddenly emptied and the story uh, that somebody uh, everybody left uh, um, left abroad for earning money and only one president was here yes I have no other examples for this maybe you look at I cannot say that there are some examples because to look into the future it's not only to make movies I I not mean like some kind of fantasy yes but it's like some maybe artistic uh, decisions or topics uh, that uh, that authors are cared about. So I think we are going to uh, change this in the last uh, two years, and in several years we will see movies about how we lived uh, this period starting from pandemic. Uh, and such films already exist, but it's in more long-term prospect. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, 
I think that they are already uh, making such movies. And final story also in Blitz, Arachtam, starting from you. <laughs> Whether the audience has changed and the viewer has changed in the last for this uh, this recent times, so we understand that movie has changed. Maria Stepanska uh, writes a lot about profession in her Facebook account, and she messaged that yes, we eventually guess, got it. We um, now can do something that we could not do before. How can uh, uh, can you say that the viewer uh, changed during that time? viewer now and viewer in future for you i absolutely sure that yes we we, we all change viewers are included and uh, we the fact that we have box office success from 0, 0.00 something of percent from general uh, box office in ukraine to eight percent it, it uh, seems to me that it's giant leap uh, in uh, interest of Ukrainian viewer in Ukrainian movies, the variety of genres that is represented in Ukrainian movie, and for each of those genres, we have their own viewer. And the same is about my thoughts are silent. It's one of the bright examples that there is a variety of viewers that for themselves can separate certain topic or certain author or certain instruments uh, with which the story is told. And how do, uh, how do you explain for yourself that's why My Thoughts Are Silent has first place in box office and our seals uh, the, the third, but it should have been uh, different, uh, probably. Uh, I uh, think that it's very subjective, but it's not tangible at all, but we actually produce air. We produce emotion. So it's a it's great, uh, great confession till the end. And can you exist without air? Is it not true? No? Can you, uh, can you touch it? And you cannot also exist without it. So that's why those emotions, that's narrative, those examples, those uh, topic of the narrative. I'm not going to talk about Roxolana, about role of Ukrainian woman in the story of existence of this country, not only this country, and the topic that's so elegant and with such a humor, with such an unexpected showing of the story found uh, their viewer and we need to add here huge work of producers and uh, pro, uh, pro, um, PR company that worked with their target future audience. So polyphony, so here we have polyphony of lots of uh, issues that at certain moment, at certain places were, were very skillfully worked on. But it's probably not a coincidence, right? The success is not a coincidence that how did the viewer change uh, during those five, seven, ten years, Katarina? I think it's the most provocative question. Uh, got older, right? Or got... Uh, or grew up. <laughs> so even from five of us, we all uh, uh, named favorite movies without repeating each other. So. Uh, let's hope that uh, each of us will find something of good quality in their own niche. I was I asked this question with optimistic expectations. I met Vlad Troisky here today, <laughs> and I remember talks with him with when we have go hold fast. And then his vision was that this this was the place and the space where people should uh, who are interested in uh, discourse should meet each other. And it was different, really like that. It was place for our uh, meeting, but he stated himself that at that moment, and it was 2004, five, six, maybe? 2006, it was the first time and it was an arsenal after revolution. We have a whole fast. And at that time, it was five, seven thousand people. 
and then the next then we had 12,000 people and I communicated with owners and activists of different platforms that wrote about culture and they mentioned that on the internet they have 10 12,000 of active users and as of now in Kyiv at least uh, we have lots of activities you cannot even choose but they, everybody finds their audience so it means that the amount of people engaged is growing so there are more because quantity is higher maybe we can say that population now we have population who again has this habit of visiting uh, cinemas or going to the cinemas maybe they go to cinema but you know it's so viewer it's such a notion I think that uh, those who are in festivals, they should know faces of their viewers. I think Yulia say, says that she has two views. One is good and one is not so good. So, of course, before p p pandemic, the amount of uh, viewers increased, of course, but it was 1% from population of Ukraine those who go to cinemas and uh, more of more than half were those who watched um, American blockbusters and for Ukrainian cinema it's a different story but pandemic times really changed uh, the habit of going to the cinemas everybody talks about what to do with cinemas cinemas are dying especially small cinemas the good news is that I'm absolutely sure that it's like opera, it's like classic music, like libraries, cinemas are going to exist, to continue existing, and people will visit them. But the fact that the audience will change drastically uh, until we finish this pandemic, that's a fact. And all distributors already uh, are afraid that the uh, or the viewer did not come back at all or came, uh, uh, came in a different uh, image. Uh, we have talked a lot about this. I think that the viewer of Ukrainian TV movies uh, have more demands now. They are more demanding. These are people who watch Netflix, who have people who have lots of things in their lives. And when we visit cinemas we expect to get something from it and not just go there because it's Ukrainian and that's the main thing that changed there are certain movies that uh, give us such sense that I'm not just here because so it's Ukrainian movie but because it's a cool movie and I think that we need to aspire to that uh, you just uh, um, voiced my statement I wanted to finish with. I'm pretty critical and demanding to movies and cinemas and I always want to have my own opinion and even if I hear some reviews that will not uh, lead me to cinemas, I still go there. So that's my advice to you. Make your own conclusions, uh, buy a ticket and then make your conclusions and judge whether you liked the movie or not. Maybe in the end there is something like that that would still please you. And it's a great pleasure for me that some time ago the amount of movies that uh, that, uh, that go there just because it's Ukrainian movie is less and there's certain kind of discount we, we do not now need to um, say that we go just because it's Ukrainian movie so go because we like it and it is very optimistic it's part of vector for me this is something that is going to last thanks a lot thank you for today's talk and thanks you for attention and uh, for uh, that in the end of such informative days you are still with us thank you Thank you for this discussion. We are going to wait for this different viewer and uh, let him please us uh, and surprise us pleasantly. I would like to um, just... <laughs> I would like to remind you that we have lots of sponsors who made uh, this event possible. So we have lots of sponsors, lots of partners who have helped us uh, uh, 
Of course, we, we would like to express our gratitude to Les Ukrainka Theatre, who helps us to deconstruct and construct the space and work with senses, even in this um, building. And what I would like to say, tomorrow we are going to continue. We are going to <laughs> continue topic of theatre, because our day is called theatrocracy. But we meet each other in a in city hall, in big hall, uh, session hall. I would like to draw your uh, attention because I'm sure that you didn't have time to read a Telegram channel because you were discussed, you were involved in the discussion. We start at 11, 10:30. Uh, introductory welcome coffee in a big session hall tomorrow, and there we will be able to talk through. Uh, everything that uh, we um, have worked on to some philosophical concepts of what is happening in the world. And right now I invite all of you for our after party and for um, and to move from public private, public uh, sphere to uh, public private space. The only thing it will start at seven. We have a time for reflection. Thank you once again. Thank you.